What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to keyframe in Premiere Pro. Now, keyframing is super, super simple, as hard as it may look. Looks as hard as it may look. For example, let me just grab this here, and as you can see, this right now is all done with the power of keyframing. And yeah, let's get to it. Here we are in Premiere Pro. Firstly, we've got a PewDiePie clip at the top and below we have a black video, which is just the black screen in the background. So what we're going to be animating is, of course, PewDiePie himself. And what we're going to do is click on the PewDiePie track and over to the effect controls here. As you can see, we now get control of the motion opacity as well. So what we're going to do is press the arrows to bring this down and you can also press the arrows on the opacity. Now, this is where we will begin to do the keyframes. Now what you're seeing is everything with a clock next to it, we can toggle keyframes with them. So the first thing I'm going to be showing you is of course PewDiePie is currently zoomed in. We're going to zoom him out and then make him zoom in. So pretty simple. First thing we're going to do where it says scale, we're going to toggle the animation. And as you can see, this keyframe has come up and here there is this diamond shape, which of course is a keyframe. So I'm going to drag this right to the beginning and all I'm going to do is left click and drag this backwards. As you can see, we can make him literally disappear. Now we're going to come across on the timeline. Now it's up to you any way you want to. And all you can do is select this button, which is resetting it back to normal, which is 100. However, I'm just going to turn it down a little bit more so he's not too big. So I'm going to put it to here. Now if we play it through, you can see we've got another keyframe here. What we've just done is simply that we've basically made the image come from small to large. Now that is, to be honest, how you keyframe, but there is a bit more to it, which I will explain now as well. If, for example, you want to go to a specific keyframe, you can see if you click here, it doesn't actually go straight to it. So over here, you've got the arrow. As you can see, it selects the keyframes you have on your screen. Another thing, we can actually change the position. So you can see at the moment he's in the center. However, we can toggle the animation again. So again, on position this time, we can toggle the animation. We can come across to the other keyframes so it's lined up here. And then if you press the motion tab over here, you can see you can then left click, drag your image or whatever you're doing, wherever you want to. Let go. As you can see, another keyframe has been created. So what we've done, everything was small and he was in the center. Now he's going to enlarge and go straight up to the top right. Just like that. Now we can do a little bit more there. So you can see we've got rotation. So we can also toggle the animation again. And we want it to be synced up with the other um, and uh, toggles we've got here. And all we're going to do is rotate it. So for this, again, you can press the motion tab. Then if you just come to the corner, you can see you got a chance to rotate him. And there you go. So as you can see, everything is on zero. 0, 960 by 540. If we go across that our next one, the position, the scale, and also, of course, the rotation all changes. So we'll just play that through from the beginning. So as you can see, he's enlarging and also rotating. And that's exactly what we wanted to create. And we can take it one step further. You can see below here, we've got the opacity. So what we can do is start off the opacity actually from the beginning at zero. Then we can come across to the next keyframe we've got so everything is in sync and we can put the opacity back to 100 and you'll see now what we've done it fades in as well as zooms rotates and positions at the same time now we can take it a step further again and this time this is actually making the overall look a bit smoother so what you can do is left click and highlight the first keyframes we've got here right click them select temporal interpolation and this one, you want to select to ease out. Now, you'll notice if we just play that through, it's more smoother. Now, if you press these arrows as well, next to what you've done, you can see these are the way the animation is working. So you've got these um, lines here. Now, as complicated as it looks, it's actually very simple. You can then adjust how you want it to be. So you can choose how curved you want it to be. If you want it to be super sharp, for example, if I put it like this, this is going to now make the scale go super, super quick. And then it'll slow down just around here before it hits it. So if I play it through for you, so you can see just like that. 
That is because of course we've made the scale really, really big. Now that is also the same for the rotation. Again, you get complete control of it right from here, right from these lines. Again, you don't actually need to, but this is just the more advanced way you can get in more control of the overall animation. Now at every point there is control, so you can see even here, the beginning and the end, beginning and the end, and again, everywhere you have put a keyframe. Now I've extended the clip to 10 seconds because we're going to take it a step further again. What we're going to do, for example, we're going to make the image zoom in. So as you can see, that's going to take three seconds to get there. And then we're going to let it sit there for three seconds as well. So the way you actually let the image sit and stay still is by pressing these buttons here, which is adding the keyframes. Now bear in mind, you need to do it for everything you've animated so far. So as you can see, this gap here, everything will stay still. Then if we keep coming across in our timeline, we can then do the complete opposite to what we've already done, which is make the image rotate and zoom back out towards the center. Now a very quick and easy way to do this, using the very first keyframes you've got, left click, highlight all of them, press Control C, come back across on your timeline, left click, press Control V, then left click and drag these to the end. And then the final thing we're going to be doing, because remember, these ones over here, they were set to ease out. So I'll just change that back. And then the end clip, what we're going to do is change that to ease in. So now you can see it's going to be a very smooth animation. He's going to rotate. He's going to zoom in right here. He's just going to stop and wait. Then three seconds later, he's going to go back to the same place. Pretty simple. Now what you can do to make it a bit more smoother is the middle keyframes actually highlight them, right click them and change this to Bezier. So instead of linear, it's now Bezier, we'll play it through. You can see it's a bit more slower, it's a very very slight adjustment, however you can see just like that it's really smooth, it's continuing to move. Now I'm going to show you one more way which is a pretty cool effect, you could say it's a bit like stop motion. So here we are, I've reset everything and I've actually put the image quite small and I'm going to move the image itself all the way to the left. So this is going to be our starting position. Now I'm going to come across to two seconds and all I'm going to do is move this to the right a bit and at the same time I'm going to use the scale and bring that up a little bit as well. Then two seconds later, so now at four seconds, I'm going to bring this across again and I'm going to scale it. two seconds again, bring it across, and more of a scale. Another two seconds, and then the final one, scale, and of course move across a bit as well. So as you can see it's picked up the keyframe style I used last time which was the ease in and the ease out. So what we're going to do for these middle keyframes here, we're just going to highlight them, right click, select time, and this time select hold. Now you're going to notice something, so it's going to move across. As you can see, it's going to be zooming in, but at the same time the position that was also going to be moving. Now that is what hold does. So as you can see, we didn't use hold on the first one. That's why it is moving across and scaling at the same time. Then from this keyframe, we pressed hold, but we didn't press hold on the scale. So it's going to continue to zoom in, but it's going to hold like that. So it's not going to move in a smooth motion, it's going to be like stop motion as I mentioned. Now you can do this for the scale as well, so you can just highlight them, right click, select hold, now play it through again. As you can see, this is going to bump across to each side, going keyframe by keyframe. Now of course, the closer these keyframes are, the quicker everything will be. So I'll show you that right now. So I've now made this four seconds and you'll see how quick everything goes just like that and it's kind of making you know like the dun 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 effect you could say <laughs> but anyway you can play around with keyframes there's actually no right and there's no wrong way to use keyframes it's an opportunity for you to be as creative as you possibly can because of course you've got so many different options of what to do it's actually very simple to use as well as I've just shown you. And if there is any questions you need, 
feel free to contact me on my social media is probably going to be the easiest way because then you can send me the videos and the pictures and I'll be able to help you a lot easier.